Good evening. My name is Mark Pepin. I'm a recent graduate of the Medical Scientist Training Program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And I have since accepted an 18-month postdoctoral fellowship funded by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation at the Heidelberg University Institute for Experimental Cardiology, studying under Dr. Johannes Box. The project I'll be presenting today started pretty early in my PhD in the lab of Dr. Adam Wendy. And uh, just some background about heart failure. It is the most common cause of hospitalization in the US today and in many developing countries. Uh, treatment of heart failure is largely limited to symptomatic management uh, because no heart failure treatments are known to reverse uh, the underlying pathological processes that contribute to its development. Um, part of that is because we don't understand kind of how different lifestyle and behavioral factors can be integrated alongside genetic predisposition uh, to confer disease susceptibility in this population. Uh, and one theory that our lab is using to be able to understand heart failure more effectively is whether epigenetics is capable of explaining this gene environment interaction. Stated succinctly, the central hypothesis of this study was to identify any distinct clinical features of end-stage heart failure that are encoded within the cardiac epigenome, specifically within cardiac DNA methylation. To accomplish this, we obtained 32 endomyocardial biopsies from patients with end-stage heart failure. We got these samples during the implantation of left ventricular assist devices, or LVADs, and as part of this procedure, a portion of the left ventricle was excised to allow uh, the insertion of the left ventricular cannula. And so we took this tissue and did, in parallel, epic array analysis for methylation, as well as next-generation RNA sequencing, which allowed us to infer some functional consequences of these epigenetic differences. And also shown here in this figure are some patient metrics that we could obtain from the medical record. Um, we have more, but this is just a subset really illustrating, uh, and it'll become relevant and shortly, that there were no racial differences across all of these patient metrics. Now, shown in the first figure is the pilot analysis that led to the current study. And I wanted to show this because this is where we first identified the possibility of a racial difference in cardiac DNA methylation. So figure sub A is showing the top 10,000 most variable CPG sites analyzed by multidimensional scaling, an unsupervised clustering method. And from this, we found that even the first principal component, there was a bimodal separation, a kind of two clusters that separated distinctly. And when we looked at all the patient metrics, only categorical patient race could explain this clustering. In figure two, we repeated this analysis in the new cohort of 32 patients, and we again saw that among the top 10,000 most variable CPG sites, there was a two-group clustering in the first principal component for which only categorical patient race could explain. Based on these observations in both the pilot and the testing cohort, we wanted to determine whether genetic contributions might be confounding our analysis of the epigenome. And this is based on reported influence of genetic polymorphisms on array-based methods of quantifying DNA methylation. And to do that, we actually didn't do DNA sequencing, which would have been ideal. But what we could do was a computational method of inferring single nucleotide polymorphisms based on the pattern of methylation intensity, which would be more consistent with allelic frequencies. And so shown in figure two sub B are these putative SNPs. Uh, but what we can appreciate here is that there is no separation uh, according to race across these single nucleotide polymorphisms. Supporting the notion that the observed differences in methylation by race are not due to genetic differences in the subjects. Better understand these differences in CPG methylation by race. We did differential methylation by comparing African American to Caucasian American subjects. And shown in figure three sub B is the genomic distribution of these methylation differences. What you should be able to see is that there was a disproportionate number of these methylation sites found within the promoter region of the genes, centered around CPG islets, or these regions of known regulatory significance. What we then wanted to do was understand what these CPG sites might be controlling functionally. 
And so we looked at these CPG sites using a heat map, figure 3 sub C, and found that there were methylation sites that were higher in African Americans and those that were lower in African Americans, or in the blue. And so we did gene set enrichment analysis of these separately um, and found that among methylation sites that were higher methylated in African Americans, these are more associated with what appear to be metabolic pathways. In contrast to that, methylation sites that had lower methylation intensity in African Americans, we found a disproportionate number of inflammatory pathways, uh, which leads us to think that there might be some influence of methylation on both metabolism and the relative inflammatory signature of the myocardium. Now, as I had mentioned before, we also did next generation RNA sequencing in these same samples. And I'm not showing you all the data, but just wanted to highlight a couple of, of genes that we found most interesting, uh, adiponectin and leptin, which were disproportionately higher in the hearts of African American patients relative to Caucasian Americans. This is particularly interesting given the metabolic signature in the methylation data. And because differences in tissue composition are capable of manifesting as differences in gene expression or methylation uh, across different samples, we wanted to look at our data to determine whether we could perceive differences in tissue composition. And shown in figure 4 sub B are just gene markers for the most prominent cell types in the myocardium, uh, but we did not see any racial differences in these gene markers. And then also not shown here was that we did a computational technique developed by Stanford's uh, genetics department called Cybersort. And this was a way of basically comparing our bulk tissue sequencing data with isolated cell types that have been sequenced. Um, but we did not appreciate any immunologic cell um, signature that differed by race. We next wanted to identify all differentially expressed genes according to patient race that possessed differentially methylated promoters, again, according to patient race. And what is shown here is the genomic distribution of these sites. When we did gene set enrichment analysis, we again found disproportionate representation of both metabolic and inflammatory pathways. Now, at this point in our analysis, we had to pause and consider the implications of this study. Despite the racially delineated differences noted in our analysis of cardiac DNA methylation, race is not a biological trait but rather a crude generalization that is often accompanied by a complex social framework of community values and experiences, heritage, and geography. So these shared physical traits are merely an association with social factors. Therefore, our goal became to identify the factors associated with the self-reported race in cardiac DNA methylation. Now, as I had mentioned before, the clinical records lacked evidence of racial differences, so we were left looking for a method of inferring demographic information based on some non-medical metric. And for this reason, we resorted to something called geocoding, which is where we could use the five-digit zip codes from our subject's area of residence uh, to understand the background and kind of social environment of these patients. So shown here in figure six are the results of that geocoding analysis based on the 2020 census data. Subfigure A is showing the census tracts from which our subjects originated. Subfigure B showing the percentage of racial and ethnic minorities that exist within each of those tracts, showing a significantly higher percentage of minority representation uh, in the tracts from which African-American subjects originated. Um, Subfigure C is the household income on average uh, in these tracts, showing no difference but a trending higher income for the Caucasian Americans. And then subfigure D is showing the regional poverty, which showed a significantly higher uh, level of poverty among African American subjects relative to the Caucasian Americans. So together, these data suggest that there is a socioeconomic difference uh, that falls according to race in our subjects that we could not perceive by looking at the medical record. Now, the last piece of data I wanted to share with you tonight is, in my opinion, the most startling. And it's the survival data of these patients at two years following LVAT implantation. What we see is that in African Americans, roughly half of them have already died by two years, 
after LVAD. And this is compared to roughly 10% of Caucasian Americans dying at two years. Although we don't yet know why there is such a big difference, um, our lab is investigating whether epigenetic differences, such as the ones we've seen here, might play a role in differential susceptibility to both the development of heart failure and the responsiveness to treatment. So in conclusion, we have seen in these data a bimodal clustering of DNA methylation in heart failure, which corresponds with racial differences and all-cause mortality following mechanical circulatory support. We see racial differences in promoter-associated methylation, disproportionately affecting both metabolic and inflammatory pathways. We also identify geographical poverty as an association with racial differences in the cardiac epigenome, which likely, in fact, impacts LVAT outcomes. From here, uh, we hope to do more analyses like this, specifically looking at human blood to determine whether circulating DNA methylation might give us some insight into the differences in methylation uh, without having to take cardiac samples. Uh, we also hope to understand the dynamics and stability of these epigenetic signatures following LVAD-induced mechanical unloading in a way that could help us gain insight into the responsiveness to therapy. And then lastly, we hope to determine more accurately whether these socioeconomic parameters are causative or associated at least strongly with cardiac DNA methylation independent of race. Uh, because we believe, again, that race is a social construct and is the culmination of a variety of behavioral, cultural, and community values um, that together might explain some differential susceptibility for disease. With that, I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Adam Wendy, who uh, runs a fantastic lab in Alabama at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. He's an incredible mentor and has been really helpful and not just with the science but also helping me throughout my career and i'd also like to acknowledge our funding through the nih national heart lung and blood institute adams r01 and my um, f30 md phd training grant as well as the humble international um, postdoctoral fellowship that i'm now um, completing at heidelberg university um, again thank you for your attention and i look forward to talking with you more during the session